All right, um, let's see this next example. Feel free to push pause to see if you're comfortable um, because now we have our handy calculator function that's gonna make it a little bit easier. Here we have a survey of 3,611 adult Americans um, found that 542 have used their smartphone to make a pur uh, purchase. Um, actually, this doesn't tell us what to do. So let's just modify this and say, let's make a 95% confidence interval on the proportion of people that have used their smartphone to make a purchase. Okay, so we're, we've modified this problem. The parameter is proportion. We're gonna find the proportion of adults that have made a purchase. Simple random sample, let's move on to A in our panic. Again, it doesn't say, so we'll just have to assume yes. It's not a deal breaker. Um, is 3,611 adults less than 5% of the population of all adults? Yes. And then finally, let's do N, sample size, times P hat. times one minus p hat. Let's make sure that's greater than or equal to 10. And it is, it's about 461. So that is greater than or equal to 10, so that's your last assumption. Okay, so name that test. We just saw in our video that it's a one population proportion, one prop, on our normal distribution Z, I, N, T. So one prop Z, int. Okay, so fill in all that information, state your confidence level, N is 3,611, X is 542, confidence is 0.95. And when you do all that, here's our interval, we should be getting I'll write it right here, um, 0 0.138 and 0 0.162. Oof, I disagree. All right, I definitely think that more than, um, you know, 14 to 16% have used their smartphone to make a purchase, right? I would gather that's probably like 80 to 90% of adults have used their smartphone to make a purchase, right? We have our Amazon apps, we have our eBay apps, we have our Etsy apps, all of this stuff, right? Okay, so we found our interval. Now it's time for our conclusion. Remember we have our template. So we are gonna say we are 95% confident that the true proportion Now, the proportion of adult Americans um, from July 2010, I suppose, that makes more sense. It might not be relevant anymore, but perhaps it was relevant in 2010. Who have used their phones to make a purchase? is between, and here's our confidence interval, 1.138 and 0.162. Okay, remember as far as the template goes, whoops, as far as, far as the template goes, we fill in the 95% confident level, we fill in this yellow part, this is our very long parameter, and then we fill in the confidence interval. So everything highlighted is what changes. The stuff just in green, that always stays the same. All right, and that's how we do confidence intervals. Whenever we do confidence intervals, we panic. Okay, and then remember too that this 0.138 and 0.162, 
we don't actually know if it's truly capturing the parameter. It could be the 95% of confidence intervals that correctly estimate it, or it could be the 5% that miss it, and that we're not estimating it correctly. But we don't know. We don't know. Okay, and then if we wanted to write out some calculator instructions, remember to find that. You guys hit the stat button. You go to the test tab, and then you find one prop Z int, and then you fill in the information X, N, and the confidence level. All right, and then the final thing we're going to do is sometimes before a study, we go in and we want to have a certain confidence level and a certain margin of error, right? And we can do that if we have a large enough sample size. So here's our next formula. The sample size required to obtain a certain confidence interval for P with margin of error E is given by the following. And we're essentially just taking our formula for the margin of error and solving for N. And then this is what we get. Okay, and then N, um, they're people, right, or individuals, so it has to be a whole number. So we would round up. Whatever we get, we would round up. Bigger samples, always better, so we always round up. Um, sometimes, though, if this is like the very first time we've done such a study, P hat wouldn't be available. So we would want to make then this P hat times 1 minus P hat as big as possible. So if there's no prior estimate, we would just say that that P hat times 1 minus P hat, the biggest it can get is 0.25, and then the rest stays the same. So the top one is if we have an estimate for P, and the bottom one if there's no prior estimate. All right, and again, we would round up. So let's see this in action. So we have that a sociologist wanted to determine the percentage of, of residents of America that only speak English at home. What size sample, that's our keyword, should be obtained if she wis wishes her estimate to be within three percentage points with 90% confidence, assuming she uses a prior estimate obtained um, from the census of 82.4%. Okay, so um, what size sample? So that's telling us to use our formula. So we have to figure out N. All right, so what do we know? If we have a 90% confidence, we have to figure out what the alpha is, because look at our formula. Our formula, we have a prior estimate, so we're gonna be using the top one. So P hat is that 82.4%, um, and then we need to figure out alpha, and we have to figure out E. So what's your alpha? So if we have 90% confidence, what's alpha? Good, 0 0.1. We said that P hat is that 0 0.824, we have a prior estimate. And then what's the margin of error? Margin of error normally follows the word within. So if we want to be within three percentage points, that's the wiggle room. That's your margin of error. So we're allowed to add and subtract three percentage points. Okay, so N is what we're trying to find. We have the P hat. Uh, we have to figure out Z sub alpha over two. And now we know what E is, it's 0 0.03. Okay, so let's start filling in the information we have. Here's our P hat. We'll wait on our critical value. Margin of error is 0 0.03. So again, we can use our Z table to figure out the critical value. We can also use inverse norm. Alpha is 0.1, right? We've done this before. And so if you want to write it here again, and you don't want to use the table, it's inverse norm. Area to the right is 0.05, so area to the left is 1 minus that. 
and again we get 1.645. We did this in an example before. Okay, so let's put this in our calculator then. And we get um, that N is equal to 436.04. Okay, um, but we can't interview 0 0.04 of a person. So remember we round up. So it's actually 437. So the sample size is 437 Americans. And that's what we would need to get 90% confidence within three percentage points.